so what is basic life support so this is basically a term that is used to describe simple measures to maintain a patent airway and to support breathing and circulation so to maintain a b and c okay so it is considered as a holding measure so this is not the final thing that you're going to do this is not the final therapeutic measure that you're going to carry out but it is just a holding measure to maintain the brain and heart viability and to buy time okay so bls when what you're doing by bls is just your buying time okay so the order of priority remains the same as the alphabetical order that is a b and c so in between we had a lot of confusion whether it's a b c whether it's c a b whether it's whatever but now the order is very clear it is a b and c okay so airway and breathing coming to airway first so heard of head tilt chin lift okay i hope everyone's heard of head tilt and chin lift so in a patient who is apneic and unconscious with no evidence of head and neck trauma you can do the head tilt and chin lift maneuver okay why do we do this maneuver it is to keep the airway open i hope everyone can see my pictures clearly so if you look at this picture over here this is the normal position in which the head is held in supine when the patient is in supine position okay so can you look at the airway over here so the narrowest part of the airway which is the glottis what happens to it it's compressed it's completely compressed okay so when you do this um okay so near the forehead the hand that is near the forehead that is doing the head tilt and the hand on the chin is lifting the chin up so what happens by that look at the airway look at the glottis it's opened up okay so this this maneuver is done to open up the airway so what is this called it's called a head tilt and chin lift and please note this point that there is no evidence of head and neck trauma in this patient why because look at the position of the neck over here so if there is a cervical spine injury then you are going to make things worse for your patient so never do this in case you know you are suspecting any trauma any head injury any spinal injury any case of drowning do not attempt this maneuver in a patient who is you know if you if you are thinking of any trauma then do not attempt this maneuver i will tell you a maneuver in the next slide for this so this is the maneuver that you can use for a patient who has had history of trauma or drowning or rta or whatever so this maneuver is called your jaw thrust so just observe the fingers of the person over here of the doctor over here or the healthcare provider over here so what is this healthcare provider doing we are going behind the jaw line and we are pushing the jaw in front we are not disturbing the head we are not disturbing the neck the only thing that we are doing is we are taking support from the forehead and we are pushing the jaw in front so what is this going to do the same thing that the other maneuver did it's going to open the airway okay so this is the maneuver that you are going to use in case of trauma so yeah uh when you are maintaining the airway at the same time you have to look for the breathing and do not spend more than 10 seconds in this okay so what you're going to look for exactly when we say look for breathing what do we mean by look for breathing look for a rhythmic chest and abdominal movement listen for exhaled breath sounds at the nose and the mouth and feel for the exhaled air okay so just remember this how do you how do you know if any person is breathing number one you look at the abdomen you look at the chest if it's moving rhythmically then they're breathing then if you're not able to figure out okay the patient is heavily clothed or something then you're not able to figure out then you look then you listen for the exhaled breath sounds and you feel for the exhaled air you are anyway at the head end so it is very easy for you to do all these things then if the patient has periodic breaths or agonal gasps gasps so we have addressed this already if the patient is gasping it is not considered as breathing because it is not an effective ventilation okay so then you consider it as not breathing patient not breathing and if the patient is not breathing then what you're going to do is you're going to initiate rescue breathing with bag and mask ventilation or mouth to mouth resuscitation okay what is the ec clamp so ec clamp is a technique that uh, you use while you hold your bag and mask uh, when you give the bag and mask ventilation the technique to hold the mask is called your ec clamp and 
all of you after today if you are going to if you are going to go to the er and you are going to give bag and mask ventilation to your patient i hope i want all of you to use the ec clamp technique because that is the only technique that is uh, approved for giving bag and mask ventilation and no other technique okay so ec clamp is a technique i'll just show you a picture in the coming slides so ec clamp is what you have to do uh, to uh, give uh, bag and mask ventilation and uh, re always remember it is never necessary to intubate your patient immediately for short periods your bag and mask ventilation is more effective and it is safe for especially when you do not have the adequate training for uh, et intubation uh, please carry on with your bag and mask ventilation because that is more effective and it is safer it it gets you more time to do other things okay and uh, for bag and mask ventilation when you're performing a bag and ma mask ventilation avoid hyperventilation and give each breath over 1 second take 1 second to give each breath because hyperventilation can be detrimental why we are doing all this is because we want to have the we want to save the patient's life if by if we want to save the patient's life we all know we have to give effective ventilation and effective circulation now what your hyperventilation is going to do is it's going to impede the venous return by increasing the intrathoracic pressure so when once the intrathoracic pressure is increased your venous return will not happen because you need a negative intrathoracic pressure for the venous return to flow into the heart so that is one reason the other reason is air trapping can occur and that can damage your lungs because of barotrauma and also there can be increased risk of regurgitation and aspiration okay so that's why we do not hyperventilate our patients okay so this is the picture of bag and mask ventilation that i was talking about this is your ec clamp so can you see by the the index finger and the thumb they form a c and the other three fingers form an e okay so that's how you do the ec clamp and this is going to be always your non dominant hand so for most of the right for all the righties uh, here your is going to be your left hand which is doing the ec clamp and your right hand gives the bag and mask you bag with your right hand so your non dominant hand will be holding the ec clamp okay just look at the picture on the left side that is the parts of the bag and mask so we have the face mask over here we have the this is the peep valve so obviously it looks different on different uh, bag and mask but that's the peep valve with which you can adjust the peep and uh, this is the self inflating bag over here which is the most important part of the bag and mask ventilator uh over here you have the reservoir bag okay all the other things this is the tubing for o2 so using this you can uh, connect the oxygen supply and you can uh, inflate the reservoir bag once the reservoir bag is inflated you you can pass on oxygen you can increase the concentration of the oxygen that is delivered to the patient that is increase the fio2 okay so i hope this picture is clear yeah so when you are providing breaths you have to provide at 12 to 20 breaths per minute and the uh, when you are providing these breaths you cannot keep counting you know okay i am giving 12 breaths per minute or 20 breaths per minute so you are going to say this sequence in your mind or you can even say it out loud so you have to say squeeze release release so when you are squeezing you uh, squeeze it you say squeeze and then release it say release release okay and uh, you minimize the gastric inflation by placing an og tube or an ng tube okay so we in the previous slide i told you that hyperventilation can cause aspiration and regurgitation so that's you can reduce that by placing an og or an ng okay whatever you can do immediately whatever you are more comfortable with if the patient continues to remain apneic or bradycardic please go ahead for an endotracheal intubation if you're not you if you're not an expert at intubation call an expert so et tubes coming to et tubes what are the types of et et tubes that we know there's a cuffed et tube and there's an uncuffed et tube cuffed et tube um where you can use it in case there is poor lung compliance there is high airway resistance and excessive airway secretions basically what happens is you form you when you inflate the cuff you form a good seal with the airway and uh, you can give more pressure okay so um that's the use of a cuffed et tube